And if we remember, the state of the state address at Vermont State House. More than a dozen people were removed from the balcony, and when he resumed his speech, the governor first talked about unity. And if we remember that we are all part of something bigger than ourselves, then the state of the state, our future, and our people will be stronger than ever before. Thank you. Good evening. We thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Lauren Maloney. And I'm Glenn Cassie. Vermont lawmakers are in their first week back under the Golden Dome in the new year. The governor laid out an ambitious series of proposal he wants them to take on. We have team coverage tonight of his State of the State address, beginning with Local 22's Mike Coey. He joins us live tonight from the House Chambers. Mike? Well, Lauren, Glenn, Governor Scott says his upcoming budget proposal will address job training needs, targeted tax relief, and universal after-school programs for kids, among other things. But as you just got a taste of a few moments ago, his address from right there at that podium wasn't without some unexpected theatrics. Listen to the people! Just after Governor Phil Scott began his annual message to the Vermont House and Senate, climate change protesters interrupted it. Capitol Police and Vermont State Police removed 16 protesters, arresting one for disorderly conduct. Once he resumed, the governor briefly went off script to acknowledge them while sharing his view that polarization is America's greatest threat. It's up to us to show that people from different backgrounds with different points of view, as we just saw, can unite around our core values and our common humanity. His biggest concern for the Green Mountain State is a demographic crisis, an aging population, and more people leaving Vermont than moving in. I see and feel the emotional and financial toll of policies built for a few areas in the state that can afford them when the rest of the state cannot. The governor touted the remote worker program as a good step, but he says more is needed. My budget will include additional investments in training with an emphasis on the trades and more incentives for young adults and working age families to stay or move here. Scott says he plans to build on a recent choice to broaden Vermont's view of education from simply K through 12 to a cradle to career approach instead. I propose to you today that we begin creating a universal after school network that ensures every child has access to enrichment opportunities outside of current classroom time and to align the student's day with the length of the workday. He hopes the state can deliver a plan by the end of the year for universal after-school programs without a property tax increase. The governor says we can expect targeted tax relief and housing relief to be part of his budget plan. I still hear about the difficulty of finding an affordable place to live. That's why my budget will include a package to revitalize existing homes and build more of them targeted to the places that need it most. This is an area where we found common ground. Finally, Scott says his budget would boost the state's incentives to make electric vehicles more affordable, especially buses. And a greater focus on affordable clean energy, as well as expanding our battery and renewable energy storage sectors and the jobs they can create. Now, the protest at the beginning of the governor's address ended up delaying it by about 15 minutes. And our live team coverage continues tonight with Local 22's Devin Bates. He's also joining us live from right here at the State House with more about that aspect of the story. Devin? Well, this was described to me as a youth led protest.